Hello and welcome. I'm Charlie Anarkan. I'm the Vice President and the Global Lead for Manufacturing and Supply Chain at Microsoft. Welcome to The Art of Possible. One of the things that I love most about this video series is the chance to learn from manufacturing leaders who are breaking new ground in the industry. One such leader is Dow. In partnership with Microsoft, Dow has embarked on a multi-year journey to digitize their manufacturing plants and transform their frontline workers using the power of data. The work is incredibly exciting, and it is very, very innovative. It has become a North Star practice in the industry. With me here today is Melanie Kalmar, Corporate Vice President, Chief Information Officer, and Chief Digital Officer at Dow. Together, we will explore Dow's best practices, learnings, and advice for leaders looking to replicate their success. Melanie, welcome, and thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you so much for having me today, Telly. And, you know, I'm really excited about some of what we've accomplished together, but I think even more importantly, looking at the things that we'll continue to deliver into the future as our work expands across Dow teams and other locations around the globe. But happy to be here. That's fantastic. Melanie, I'll start by first congratulating you on being selected as the 2022 CIO of the Year Orbi Awards finalist. And this nomination really highlights your outstanding leadership. And we, we, we here at Microsoft congratulate you wholeheartedly on this important recognition. Well, thank you very much. It is exciting and it's really tough competition. I've got some really uh, tough uh, finalists that I'm up against for this. But, you know, it's really a team effort, and I'm really happy to represent Team Dow and all the great work of our people in getting the, the finalist recognition. So thank you. I uh, love it. And, and I'll say uh, this is well-deserved. Um, so let's spend a little bit of time, Melanie, to, uh, to know you as a person, as a leader, can you share more about your background, role at Dow, and what you're most passionate about? What gets you energized? Sure. And, you know, I've spent my entire career with Dow. I started with Dow out of college. And as you said, now I'm the chief information officer and chief digital officer today. But, you know, I think back on my career and all the times, even including in college when I was the only woman in the room, and it was really important that I knew who I was and what I stood for and, and what I could do. And, you know, I love tech and I knew I was good at it. And I just had to stay grounded in being my authentic self and, you know, holding my values and my dreams close to my heart. And like I said, I knew what I was good at and I knew with hard work and perseverance, I could make a difference. And I think you know, that's uh, hopefully exciting for others in tech to, to stick with it. There are just some really exciting career opportunities. But today I'm I'm a real passionate advocate for STEM careers. I, you know, I love mentorship and helping women in technology. I actually serve as an advisory board member of our Michigan Council for Women in Technology here in Michigan. And I'm a member of our Dean's Council for Central Michigan University School of Business. So helping to get more students uh, engaged with STEM. And you know what, Dow, I've held uh, a lot of leadership roles outside of my day job, uh, focused on driving our company's diversity, equity, and inclusion strategy. I'm a member of our President's Inclusion Council, and I'm a, our executive sponsor for what we call Prime, which is our employee resource group focused on engaging our 50 plus population. So the, the really important population in the company. Um, outside of work, you know, I'm an animal lover and a strong advocate of animal rescue. My husband, uh, who's a private pilot hobbyist, uh, and I participate in what's called Pilots and Paws. For, we've done that for several years really helping to move dogs and cats to rescue groups in their forever homes. And I'm really active in fundraising in our Humane Society here in Midland County where I live. But of course, I also have a fur baby of my own. He's an almost three-year-old chocolate Labrador named Remington, who uh, he sure made all of this work from home tolerable. 
and uh, definitely brings joy to my life every day with his antics and his uh, unique personality. So a little bit about me. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm glad I started there. And uh, we share a passion, I will say, but we'll not uh, take much more time away. Um, you, you're, you're one of those people who has like 36 hours in a day, I guess, uh, fitting all of that, uh, that activity and leadership and work into, uh, into your day. That's, that's amazing. And thank you for sharing all of that. Now, let's focus on the work that our two companies have been doing together in terms of empowering uh, one of your key digital breakthrough areas, Melanie, that is around digital manufacturing acceleration. Uh, it's about using data intelligence to create visibility and efficiency at Dow to accelerate your transformation. I, I think this is just at the heart of what we call the art of possible. You're bringing that to life. And so through this project, um, we've gone from ideation to prototyping to implementing uh, minimally viable products to now developing that is um, uh, uh, at scale that is now being rolled out in 29 plants and it'll continue to scale. So can you, short, uh, can you share a little bit about your work and your learnings and this journey uh, uh, together? Absolutely. And, you know, the art of the possible really resonates here. I would say our digital manufacturing effort is focused on improving our competitiveness, uh, increasing quality and reliability, which are really important in the manufacturing space, and really being more sustainable and doing all of that a lot more safely than we already do today. And I would say one of the key elements of the effort was partnering with our manufacturing and business leaders to really understand you know, how we could better address their needs by making you know, relevant information more available to the plant personnel. You know, we had to work to uncover the pain points or what decisions were difficult and then, you know, where data was difficult to get. And what we found is, you know, like I think many companies, but especially in the manufacturing space, we have all the data. It was just all over in siloed systems and it wasn't organized in a useful in a way that was useful at all. So in short, you know, our teams weren't aligned. Our leadership was you know, driving different priorities. And when I say our teams, I mean our teams within Dow, uh, the different uh, functions and organizations, we were driving different priorities. We really had to take a step back and think bigger picture about, you know, the, the work uh, that would more, you know, drive, I would say more holistic improvements for our employees, for our customers, and for Dow's overall performance and reliability. So we've focused on providing manufacturing, what we call manufacturing insights or dashboards or presenting data in a consumable way, uh, digital procedures, really getting information in the hands of the workers while they're out in the field, digitizing some of our systems and our procedures that are really important to follow the steps from a safety perspective, digitalizing all of that and putting that in the hands of the users you know, improving the management of our contractors. And we actually had to put a lot of work and effort into the infrastructure at our sites. You know, just to name a few of the things that we've been working on at, like you said, these 29 plants, which is really at one of our, our largest sites uh, for Dow. You know, we started, uh, like I said, with that one site, but uh, we're, we're starting to, to assess and look at how we could expand those capabilities across multiple sites and actually going to, to Asia Pacific and Europe uh, next. And our partnership with Microsoft really helped us accelerate the aggregation and visualization of the data that we needed to solve you know, the issues that we uncovered and identified. So a little bit of background there. No, that's, uh, that's, that's really exciting. You and I, um, you, through our work, already agreed that um, technology is an enabler for business outcomes, and I know that that has been your focus. Also, execution is key, and and from that perspective, your work has been uh, especially impressive, um, um, I think. And so, perhaps a, a couple words on like how did you get everyone on board with the with the project and the journey, and where did you start? Yeah, okay, so this, this part was not easy, and I don't want to paint a picture otherwise. And I would say you have to start all of these big initiatives with people. 
and really understanding the history of how your organization has worked. And it's going to be different at every company. And this started several years ago with a focused effort to partner with our man manufacturing vice president at Dow to drive you know, innovation, really focused on innovation with, you know, technology to support it and, uh, you know, technology implementation to support it. And I would say, you know, similar in many companies, the IT and the OT organizations are separate. And for some reason, you know, there was a wall between the two here at Dow. So we started at the top by recognizing the strengths of each of our organizations. In the OT space, you've got really strong engineers and a deep understanding of you know, Dow's manufacturing operations. And in the IT space, we know how to standardize solutions and not that standard is the answer you know, when you're dealing with totally different plants, but we have that mindset and we have a structured implementation methodology. So we started working on and testing some things together. We co-funded some focused development in an innovation center. And we literally had to give our teams permission to work together to really break down the old silos and, and ways of working, or in this situation, not working together. And we started out by working on robotics and drone capabilities. Um, and you know these efforts have really reduced thousands of confined space entry or other high risk activities. So we've we've really been able to deliver a real employee satisfaction and safety benefit there um, and, and have had a good, a very significant impact on, on many of the people in our manufacturing plants. But I think from there, the ball started rolling where we um, we're developing the team working norms, and it was it was really exciting to see these team members across IT and OT recognizing each other and and really identifying more opportunities to work together. And we outlined a plan for you know what we call digital manufacturing and and linked our efforts directly to key areas of value for our manufacturing leaders. And the positive results allowed us to gain alignment with our board of directors for a strategic investment to accelerate the, the realization of what we were seeing. Um, it, it does indeed. It, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to people, but I want to kind of perhaps stay a minute on um, the, the value realization. The results have been mind-blowing, so we can, we can quickly agree on that. But where did you see the biggest value in terms of performance increases? Where do you feel like most proud so far in terms of your work? Yeah, I'm going to start by just saying that I think one of the most exciting elements was the direct engagement with our businesses. And like you said, to deliver real value for them. It's, it's, and it's the value that they talk about, not the value that I have to talk about. And I think that's a differentiator in what makes this really exciting. You know, we're not just delivering on a set of tools, but, you know, the solutions that we're putting in place are, are going after the issues that they identified. And then in addition, the, the speed at which we were able to turn some of these elements, you know, being tested in our innovation centers in partnership with Microsoft into solutions being deployed across multiple plants was, you know, has been really incredible. And of course, you know, our, our manufacturing component, you know, it's a core part of our end-to-end -end experience from, you know, a customer placing an order to final delivery. Manufacturing plays a key role in that. And our efforts were focused, like I said, on our targeted value propositions. And I've covered some of them already, whether it was reliability or reduction of unplanned events and safer operations. But I would say specifically the key area we delivered is what we call our integrated data hub, which you know pulls together our disparate data sources to and we provide our you know critical dashboards with what we call manufacturing insights for both field workers and leaders out of this environment. And you know the the dashboards and the information really range from helping pinpoint potential defects or production failures uh, in early detection before things occur, but also help uh, you know it's helping the teams make manufacturing decisions to optimize output or streamline our maintenance tasks. And of course, this is all hosted on Azure and and takes advantage of the latest Microsoft capabilities. 
But we've also worked on our mobility platforms, really putting information in the hands of the employees when they're, you know, so they have it when they need it to drive better decisions in the field. And like I said, um, you know, we had a lot of infrastructure work to make sure that this could be a possibility to provide wireless capability. And there was a ton of, uh, of work required to cleanse and align data across those silos that I talked about. But, you know, as we get these tools implemented and we have now have this new, what I call digital ecosystem, you know, it provides a great foundation for keeping our data aligned and, and really being able to leverage additional data in the future in that, what we call our integrated data hub. Excellent. I, I love the emphasis on uh, data, of course, data to intelligence to outcomes and data as in IT data coming together with OT data, including the systems and the leadership. That is fantastic. But I love more is obviously the emphasis on people, Melanie, and that is fantastic, particularly on empowering that frontline worker. I know it was a key priority for you, given you know like the, we're suffering from a major skills gap in manufacturing at large from a workforce and uh, um, uh, employee enablement that your emphasis on the frontline worker pushing that new systems of intelligence or systems of reality, if you will, into the hands of the workforce to streamline decision making and increasing the level of intelligence uh, and data driven decision making in the in the enterprise um, was just phenomenal. It is phenomenal. This is still work going on, and um, uh, perhaps it's a uh, it'll just keep on giving as a gift. Uh, so. How, can you uh, share a little bit in terms of how it helped the workforce? Yeah, you're spot on. You know, our frontline workers um, in, in our industry and in manufacturing, they're actually out in the field. They're out in the plants. They're walking around. They've traditionally had, you know, little access to, to IT technology in the field. They've always had to go out and then come back to the, you know, to the to the control center or to a you know, central office to, to log on to get information. And by, you know, putting this, what I mentioned, our site-wide network uh, connectivity, uh, getting that data integration uh, between our platforms and, and delivering the customized tools targeted at their specific needs was really game-changing for our workforce. You know, it's providing them better transparency and communications, like I said, between the, co the control room and the field operator lot better collaboration between sites and across geographies um, and a lot better visibility for our leadership. And I think we're just starting to see the beginning of what, uh, what will unfold from this, you know, exposing the data and like you said, the, the realities of what the data are showing. And when we can start Seeing that not just within a site, but across our sites as we implement these capabilities further, I think we're going to see some some breakthrough um, breakthrough results and outcomes. I'm sure we will. This is really really powerful, Melanie. Thank you. So as we wrap up, any parting thoughts? Perhaps more importantly, any any advice for uh, manufacturing leaders um, as they embark on their uh, similar transformation journeys? Sure, you know, absolutely it's an investment. It's an investment, like I said, in in people, mostly in the people. You have to start with understanding where people are to to know, you know, how big of a walk is it going to be to get them to where they need to be to to really leverage and take advantage of the the data and the capabilities uh, that we're providing. But you know, you need to be focused on the value and prioritization of the opportunities. There's there's so many out there. You got to focus on where the, you know, where the where the pain points are, where you're really going to get uh, you know, the the manufacturing organization excited about what you can deliver and and what you can help in terms of making their jobs easier. And just don't under underestimate the legacy systems and the the data that requires integration. It's a it's a big task. Uh, you know, we've realized a lot of gains, but it it doesn't come without some pain along the way. And you really do have to invest for the long term. These aren't uh, you know quick quick fix. I mean, to get the the initial uh, foundation built takes takes a little while, but then things start happening pretty quickly. 
And when you're investing for the long term, you've got to think big picture. You know, Dow's investment in emerging technologies and what we're working with uh, with Microsoft, you know, will not only empower our manufacturing ecosystem of workers, but it's going to, you know, create streamlined and more efficient work processes. It's really changing how people do their work. This is simply amazing. Thank you so much for sharing it all. Thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're extremely busy, uh, but these insights and learnings are key for the uh, welfare of the uh, ecosystem at large. So, uh, so we truly appreciate it. I know our viewer viewers will appreciate it as well. So thank you again very much for joining us uh, today, Melanie. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks to you and your team for the partnership. and for your time and making this conversation possible. And I'm, I'm super excited to see what's next for our companies together.